I, I could see a little bit of a shy photographer here. This looks to me like the classic, like the photographer got caught and didn't take a nice picture because they got caught. I don't, I don't know what the photographer is trying to achieve. I don't know what they're trying to say. Photographers, they're, they're afraid to approach people for, for portraits. They're afraid to approach people in general. And, and I get that. But I tell you what, like nine times out of 10, people usually say yes. I, to get better, you have to work through it. I, I tell you what, every time I didn't someone i hated myself for it hello everyone welcome back to the channel and today i'm here with justin mott uh an independent photojournalist commercial photographer and documentary filmmaker based in vietnam hello justin thank you for joining me today thank you for having me excited to be here <laughs> apart from being a photographer you also have a youtube channel right where you also do like critiques similar to those right i do i do a lot of behind the scenes and photography advice and some venting and then i just started a whole series where i pull up sort of celebrities that are into photography and i i just started it like yesterday and i kind of critiqued their work i introduced you to the work offered my opinion about it and i just sort of did an episode yesterday with uh jeff jeff bridges not like jeff bridges was on but i i critiqued jeff <laughs> okay jeff bridges work So yeah, I'm enjoying it and I've been enjoying YouTube for a while now. That's All right, I will leave it in the description for anyone who wants to who wants to check it out. And I would like to ask you uh, during this session to critique the photos I'm going to show you as if they were probably your own or as if you had them uh, for maybe one of your clients and you know, just okay. to give us your opinion. Yep, sure. Absolutely. All right, let's take a look at the first one. All right, well, if this was my own, I would be surprised because I very rarely shoot vertical. I always shoot horizontal. So I'd be like, <laughs> what are you doing, Justin? <laughs> Is there a particular you know, reason for this, that? I had this teacher, you know, I think all of us, it's like with your childhood, you have the same thing with your, you come from a formal photography training. You have some good and some bad where you've like, you have certain things that you've never been able to like get out of your mind that your professor said or that an influential teacher said, whatever that is, whether it's school or through a workshop or something. My, one of this, uh, this famous photographer, or conflict photographer, Gary Knight from Seven, and mm -hmm. he told me, he's like, well, you don't, you don't see the world. You don't have your eyes on top of each other. They're off side to side, right? <laughs> you don't see things. And I don't know, like that made an impression on me as a young photographer. I always looked up to that kind of work. But I still feel like you can, you know, vertical and make it interesting. It just doesn't work well for my style. And I also shoot with a 35 mil. But I think the first thing that comes to my mind when I look at this photograph is the color palette is quite interesting. There's even little subtle things that you might miss after first glance. I like to look at a photo a little bit longer because I appreciate when a photographer sort of like plays a little bit of a where, where's Waldo thing in there. Like, look at the color palette here on the awning, the blue and the white. And then, yes, you've got the same sort of nice blue. And then you even put the little palette on uh, this uh, this woman here, you know, with just a little bit of, of the of the blue on her. It's almost like this was styled for like a commercial shoot or something like that, for mm -hmm. like a lemonade ad. You know, this could be a great <laughs> lemonade oh, yeah. ad. Maybe if the if there's a little more ice and maybe some coasters on there or you got rid of the... You get rid of the, the knife and fork, <laughs> if you look a little nicer, but even just the little blue in her skirt and then just the one little, a photographer like was smart to recognize. A lot of people say, well, you get lucky, but I always say smart photographer that actually put this out there. You know what I mean? They recognize it as a good shot. And it is because even just the little pop of the red right there in the fingernail, the one color that's not in the palette, the blue palette just pops right there. I dig it. I like it overall. I think it's a cool, cool little find, sort of like a street photography shop, but not in that traditional street photography way where it has to be like this moody black and white or this obvious juxtaposition. It doesn't fall into a cliche of any sorts. And, and I always respect that and dig that. I think a lot of photographers, when they go out and shoot street, they're kind of mimicking other photographers' cliche shots. And I, I'm just, I look at so much of that, I get bored with it. And this is playful and it works well in color and the color was used well so overall I, i dig it i think it's a really cool shot is there anything you would improve if you you know were there if you could yeah i would love you know because I, it, it's tricky right i think sometimes like i like that when the photographer gives you you a little more respect that they might look around a little bit more but i think the red on her fingernails might have popped if it was on the table that could have been interesting like you know because you barely see it it's stuck in the shadow so that Right red fingernail if she was holding onto the table or if it was like backdrop by the white napkin so it popped out a little bit more uh or even just like i'm a moment person i i, I don't like he's just on the phone who would have got lucky and they were holding hands or something like that but I, hmm. i don't i don't think it needs that but i would have liked the red in a position color wise because this this photo is really all about the color palette there's not a lot else going on you know it, and so i think so from that that standpoint i would love it if it was on the table because the red would pop a little bit next to the blue It'd be the one little out of place element to this entire shot but It's really cool. I dig it. Good job for the photographer for recognizing it, it to take it, and then also just good job to recognize it and have the confidence that, you know, they submitted it, so they knew it was probably a pretty good shot, and it is. All right. 
Moving on to the next one. Okay, first of all, the uh, I'll probably be a little bit harsher on, on this picture because I feel like the other shot is like a cleaner, more refined version of this picture. This photographer here is relying a lot on this red and white color palette. like, And it, that it does exist there, but this is an example of like someone that you have those colors in the shot, but it, it still need more than that if you want to make it a, uh, want to make it a nice picture. It, you need good composition and good light, and sort of have these elements come together. And and I don't feel like it does there. She gets lost a bit behind the ambulance. You know the composition. I I don't love the slow shutter of her bit. It's maybe like what like a twentieth of a second, so she's a little bit blurry. I don't think that adds anything to it. Um, the background there, your eye goes to the brightest spot of a picture. A lot of people know that. So it goes guy in the background there. Uh, and again, so I, I feel like it's like it's the idea was nice that you recognize the color palette. Maybe you were patient and waited for it. Um, but that's not enough. You know, it's not enough to have that. It's the same when you're doing sort of these like, you know, old and new sort of juxtapositions or just like uh, they're a little cliche. And then it's it, and then if it is cliche, I, I'm not going to like it firstly anyways. But if it's a little cliche and you execute it well with light and composition, nice moment, then maybe I'll be more forgiven. But here, I, I, I don't feel like any of those things really come together. So I, I like that the photographer recognized the colors, but I don't think that they really executed on the picture. And maybe there wasn't anything to execute. If I was going to say, how would I improve this? I don't know. I, I don't really gravitate towards shots like this. I don't just say like, oh, these are some interesting colors, red and white. So I'm going to wait for some red and white to come through. That's not enough for me in a photograph. I look for emotion. I look for moments. I mean, mm -hmm. but my background is as a photojournalist. So that that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for stories a collection of images that tell stories or even single images that tell a story. And I don't, I don't get a story out of this. I don't get a moment out of this. And even with light and composition, it didn't really come together. Was that too harsh? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. All right. Thank you. Let's move on to the next one. See, this is more my speed as far as light and drama. I mean, composition is excellent here. I mean, you've got the low angle looking up. So all your subjects pop out of the sky really nice. Of course, like I'm such a sucker for dramatic light and dramatic skies and for like those sunbursts like that so the fact that you have the sun just like you know beaming through the cloud city in the background the people in the foreground you know every there's a there's a couple different layers there it, it's nice like the base of it is nice if i'm gonna be tough and say how do you improve it I, i'd like something else happening there in the shot i don't know if they were playing sport if there's any sport being played there I don't know if you could have got a, even a, a better layer in the foreground of shot shot like through someone's leg, someone filling up the frame a little bit in the foreground with, with you know, with the, like a, the outline of a human or if they were playing whatever, cricket or, or football or baseball or anything, you know, would have been a little bit more, more interesting. Something. But the dramatic sky, the city in the background, the back layer, really nice. But as you move forward to the, to the sort of the foreground, it doesn't do a lot for me other than that they're just silhouettes. I think it's a pretty good shot could be an exceptional shot if you had a great moment in the foreground. All right. Thank you. Moving My on pleasure. to the next one. I mean, this is cool. This is something like, hey, listen, this photographer, whether they set up this person to do this on per uh, like a purpose or it just got to happen like naturally. It's awesome. It just feels like this like <laughs> futuristic superhero sort of moment. It doesn't Terminator. fall into. Right. Yeah. Like Terminator or something like that. Right. That's what I was going for. You nailed it. You know, I, I think that's pretty wild to me. I mean, it doesn't fall into one of the street photography cliches. It's got its own thing going well. The reflection's really nice. It's interesting. If I were to do anything to improve it, I would probably do a little bit of a crop to crop out the how in the corner, the H-A-O, because your eye kind of goes there second, and I, I don't love that because it's like a bright little spot with words on it. I, I would sort of, I would like to crop that out real time rather than in post-production, but I don't mind if someone did it in post-production or even just a, even a, even a, quite a bit tighter of a prop where it's like more of this lady's face but she's almost like yeah it's like the emperor or he or the emperor mixed with the terminator that long hair the the, the other red in the shot of the of the taillights of the car subtle yellow it's cool i mean as far as like uh, for these type of shots when you're shooting uh, riding public transportation i've done these shots a lot as a you know as an assignment photographer as a street photographer or someone who just like carries my camera with me everywhere and it's it's smart whether they got lucky or or whether I don't think they got lucky I think they actually saw this and get this so I think it's it's rather clever it's rather patient and well executed a cool picture overall do you like to use reflections in your work yeah I, I do quite a bit I probably use it too much in my commercial work you know we're, we're, a lot of times in commercial work we're shooting these like I do a lot of uh, my 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 other business my visuals we do a lot of video production and commercial shoots and then like so it's like hotel hotels and and 
property development. So often we're doing stuff that's not open yet. So we have to like be very creative and work around areas of like, okay, this lobby's not built yet, but this part's built. So we have to shoot through a lot of mirrors and glass in our foreground. And, you know, I use it in general just to try to make the mundane more interesting, but I definitely like took that from my editorial work using it creatively in my street photography and my New York Times assignments work, like where I have to get like a 15 picture slideshow and I'm running out of ideas. So I use it there. And then I sort of took that into my commercial work quite a bit. So yeah, I use reflections all the time. I try not to be too repetitive with it. I try to make it interesting and I try to make it like when I use it, I try to make it make sense. You know what I mean? Like here's a good, this, this image here with the reflection, it makes sense. It's perfect. Like, because you've combined these two elements there. Again, I, I really don't like, I think this, it's a really cool shot. I would like it cropped in like quite a bit. I think it would be even more powerful, but it's very well done by the photographer. Really, really cool. I mean, that's why you keep your camera on you. That's why you travel around with it. You never know when things like this are gonna are gonna pop up. I mean, you don't go out and plan this shot typically. <laughs> you know, this just yeah, happens yeah, yeah, by yeah. having your camera on you and <laughs> and looking and being aware and being ready. It's very well done. All right, moving on to the next one. Yeah, here. Um, this looks like some sort of like like <laughs> like it's funny right so i like okay if I, when i look at a photo i look at two things if it made me feel something it kind of did a good job that's like the first thing and so i'll let that i'll use that like and forgive a lot of other things like like composition i don't love the composition i don't love the light but it's funny it looks like this like walking area with a lot of drinking going on it looks like this guy i don't know what he's doing i don't know if he can or can't walk or if he's just happens to be chilling on the ground having a beer so i don't know i mean it's not funny if he can't walk it's more funny if he's i guess not that funny if he's pretty drunk that he can't stand up but it, or if it's just that he just decided to plop down and have a beer um but you know composition I, I i like a little bit more clean composition or if it's messy then i want it to be messy with purpose and i, I don't feel like it has that like he's got that guy sort of growing out of his shoulder there to the right uh the light is pretty flat throughout the the there's a mood to it because it's like this dusk shot or like and the lighting in the background you know, with all the neon lights and things like that. But there's all that negative space off to the left and off to the right. I think for you to pull off this shot, you might have to be even lower and maybe with a longer lens and maybe like looking up so the, the man pops out of the sky or is like framed around all those neon lights in a more interesting way. But yeah, I, I, I don't love this. There's a lot of little things with the composition. These people like cut off on the right half of their body, half the body on the left. I, I try to work around those things or, or I don't take the picture at all or I don't. Sometimes I take the bad picture, but I don't show it. So uh, I try not to do that, though. Every time I take a bad picture, I look at mine like, oh, don't take, why did I take that? Don't take it again. So, yeah, I, I don't love this one nearly as much as, as some of the other ones. I just feel like it's, it's I don't I don't know what the photographer's trying to achieve. I don't know what they're trying to say. I think, yeah, if, if someone just plopped down and was having a beer there and enjoying the streets, fine. But it's hard for me to also know because I, I can't really see what's happening in, in front of them. All right. Thank you. All right. Let's take a look at the next one. Yeah. So for me, I... I'm never, nine times out of 10, I'm not going to like a picture of someone looking right at the camera unless it's like meant to be a portrait. You know, if it's really like, okay, that was the purpose. This doesn't necessarily look like it was meant to be a portrait. Uh, because I just, again, I, I'm always going to look at things from that perspective as a documentary photographer, as a photojournalist. My job was always to kind of like to, to work around that. If they noticed me, I'd look away. And that's a good way. Like when you're when you're photographing people and they notice you, a lot of times people just freeze and they shoot it. Photographers are scared. They're shy. And I understand that. Like, I was shy when I first started, but I couldn't be because it's my job. You know, so I understand your average street photographer, your average person that's not a pro or an amateur. They don't have to do that. They don't have to, like, put yourself through that of, like, you know, if, if you are shy, you don't have you can you can indulge in that. But I, I couldn't, you know, I had to be able to get shot. So if I like this guy, if I like what was happening, I would I, I'd probably look away. I do a lot of little fake things where I'm pretending to look one way, I shoot another way. Or sometimes I circle back or I tend to try to shoot. I recognize someone and I'm interested in them, I'll approach kind of slowly, try not to make eye contact or look in a different direction that I'm shooting. So I might be shooting him, but I'm looking off at his light. So then or like maybe at his, like off to the baskets where he is or off behind him. So then he thinks it's just a little mind game I play because people, people think you're shooting where you're looking. So if you just look like I'm shooting you, but I'm looking just to your left, they'll start looking to your left. And that's how you kind of get those shots. Um, as far as like interest, what, the interesting part of the photo composition you know, again, I don't like the guy growing out of his back right there. I think if I think he could make for a cool portrait of this guy. But again, I'm a professional. So if I like this guy and I found him interesting, I'd go strike up a conversation with him. And then I would figure out like a cool way to get a portrait with his hat and those glasses and maybe through those baskets that he has, whatever he's doing there, whatever he's promoting. It looks like he's got all these like old news clips that he's selling. And then maybe that chair in the background or maybe like if I looked at this, I would love a portrait of him sitting in the chair 
in the back of his van with that with that hat looking off to the side using the light from the back coming in that's how i would see it whenever i look at a scene I'm like this is a portrait or this is a street shot or this is nothing i sort of make this like while we're talking about like the terminator before i make these like terminator calculations i'm like <laughs> this is what I'm going to do. And this is how I'm going to do it. And then I, and then I commit to it. But I, I, you know, when I see, when I teach, I see a lot of photographers, they're, they're afraid to approach people for, for portraits, they're afraid to pr- approach people in general. And, and I get that, but I tell you what, like nine times out of 10, people usually say yes. If you have good intentions, if you have a smile and you, you, you kind of nice to them or you strike up a conversation first. And if you're looking for a more candid shot, then you just need to be more creative than how you approach people. So that's how I would see this picture. I saw, I could see it as a portrait that he's got this empty van with these chairs in the background. I'd, I'd like sort of like a wide angle portrait of him in that van with that hat and those funky glasses and, and even that little red marker coming out of his, you know, those little subtle things. It's almost like the red marker and the red nails. I like those little details. I look for that in shots. But, <laughs> right, you know, I, a... I think it had potential, but I, I could see a little bit of a shy photographer here. This looks to me like the classic, like the photographer got caught and didn't take a nice picture because they got caught. Uh-huh. And I, I understand that fear in, in a lot of photographers. But I, I just, I, to get better, you have to work through it. I, I tell you what, every time I didn't approach someone, I hated myself for it. And I can't think of too many times or ever that I regretted approaching someone and them saying no. I mean, someone, people have said no to me, but, you know, that it happens very rarely and it's no big deal. They say no and you move on. Yeah, that's actually a great advice. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's take a look at this uh, little more grainy one. Yeah, this has a cool mood to it. You know, I don't mind the, the uh, like, it's all that, like, uh, empty space there, that negative space. Space, but I think it works well. I like the film grain there. I like the look of the the person on the bike there. I don't know if that's the beach or where they're at or this empty concrete or it's it's interesting, right? I mean, I like I like the bicycle. I like the, it looks like the guy has a little hat, little outline of the glasses. It's very artistic. It's different. It, it has something to it, you know. I, I I like it. I don't like necessarily absolutely love it, but I like it. But I, you know, I'm tough. I'm telling you, man. I look at pictures all the time. And I look at my own and I critique myself in, in a tough way as well. So I'm, I think as a, it's a nice picture overall. You know, I think it's, it's, it's interesting. It's intriguing. I like, like the, the ground is interesting. I don't know what they did there. It looks like it was either added shot with film or, or added mm. like post-production with a lot of grain. I don't know, but it's, it looks like a little bit of a slow shutter there, obviously, because you see the, so the tracks of the lights in the background, you see that a little bit off to the top left. That looks like like maybe some sort of movement there. I can't tell if the light's moving or maybe just like move the camera a little bit. And it was a slow shutter. Um, do you think? But, yeah. Do you think the edit is what makes this shot? If I showed you this picture, you know, um, grain free in color in DNG, this is. Do you think that? The, the style which is you know here being shown being used to present this shot yeah is what makes it that's a great point i think it's a, it's a interesting to bring that up and i i think you, you might be onto something there i think it, it might add a little bit to it just because the way the ground is has this weird like i don't know it looks like a different universe or something like that it looks like it's on a different planet um so yeah i think that could be it's hard to tell without seeing it without any processing but i you know yeah i mm. i i I don't know. Like, but sometimes, like, if I if I don't analyze it too much, sometimes I like to just look at something quickly, and it's it's interesting to me. It's it's intriguing. That that guy's kind of interesting. It's it's like a like, not a love for me. Let's take a look at this one. <laughs> uh, you know, this this is interesting in that sort of street photography juxtaposition sort of move. I mean, I can't say that. I mean, it's it's not really a cliche, I guess, because it's just been kind of. It's like it's been it's. It, it's just something we can all all relate to. It's it's there. It's it's more of a classic, I guess, than a cliche. And I think it's executed well here as far as the content, um, because you know it's just interesting the cross and adding the religious side to someone that looks like they're not naked. They're in a bikini, but it's like you know it's obviously exposed out there. The their, their skin is exposed in the sun. I think the moody light is really interesting. The fact that the cross is in the shadow and she's in the light. So I think it's smart of the photographer to to recognize that to capture that interesting light. It looks like you know it could be like midday, so the light's quite harsh. And a lot of people think you can't shoot in harsh light, but I always try to find stuff within the shadows when I midday when they have mm. these that really harsh light and harsh contrast, I try to make use of it. And the photographer exposed well there and they did a good job making use of it. Found a subject that the light was hitting, found found a subject that the light wasn't hitting, but was still able to use it, right? The shadow of that, I, it might be like a grave. If this was like a graveyard, which I think it yeah, is. Yeah, I think this is I like a, a bunch of graves. yeah, the, 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 I, I don't remember I, the city where this was taken, but uh, the photographer said something like people, uh, you know, 
go there to you know sunbath or just you know to spend like a leisure uh in the graveyard park kind of yeah. thing yeah which is uh i think that's interesting uh, but i think the fact that we had to talk about that a little bit i think that the the photographer could have maybe shown some of the other graves or if there's more people laying out it looks like a place with a lot of potential if people are doing this often um because it's it is interesting if i were to see like these you know a lot of cemeteries have these like rows of, of headstones but i mean obviously to have the cross there really sticks out so mm. In that way, but I, it could also have been like a memorial or a statue of sorts too. So, but the fact that it's a cemetery makes it even more interesting. You do see a little bit in the background if you look closer. You do see the the other the other uh, headstones back there. But I just think it gets lost a little bit. I would like the photography to be a little bit closer. I understand that gets into like creepy category you're photographing a woman in her bikini but i mean at the same time she's in a bikini at a graveyard i mean isn't everyone <laughs> just spared a photograph i don't know what the rules are there depends what country you're in i guess for the rules but i think uh i think there's potential there and you know sometimes i say like i'd love for you to get closer and get a more interesting shot and people say well yeah but I, you know i was nervous not that, that but like people do it you know i always think about that it's the same with access you know people say like oh yeah but i couldn't get access but someone else did so if someone else can you can so if like you want to be really really like the best or really good that's how a lot of photographers get it it's not that they're always the most talented the photographers that get sort of the best shots it's they put themselves in position but they also take that extra step for for access whether that mean like getting access to something tough like for me when i had to go undercover to photograph the rhino horn trade and and you know get access to the the black market mafia guys that's its own thing i'm not saying everyone has to do that or sometimes it's just access like talking yourself into like or talking your way into like the guy in that picture a couple of shots ago, like getting a portrait of him in the van. It's extreme levels of that, but it's it's kind of that that little last twenty five percent is is that talking your way, talking yourself sometimes into getting closer, or talking the subject into you know doing a nice portrait, or, or if you're doing a documentary, talking yourself in talking your way into access to that story. So I think that's the part that a lot of amateurs or pros that don't really go to that next level, the part that they leave out. They think it's talent, but it's not. A lot of the best photographers aren't that, not necessarily the most talented. They just push themselves more to get that kind of access. All right. <laughs> but it's nice. It's a nice picture. You know, it's interesting. It, does, it makes you laugh. Yeah, right it, 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 think, it makes you think. I think it's think, one of those. Yeah. Sh yeah. <laughs> and I think it could, I just, it's one of those ones like, oh, I love that scene. I would have loved to work it. And maybe the photographer did. It's not fair because sometimes, we're bad editors of our own. Not that they're a bad editor, but I mean, sometimes like we're, we don't, we're not always the best editors of our own work. So I'd love to see if they work this a little more. Scene like this, I would have worked every angle. I would have tried to go up a little bit higher and played around with that. I would have tried to get closer, work through the shadows. I would have tried to like block out some of those extra bright spots in the background the best I can. But maybe they did work it. Maybe yeah. they didn't. Maybe they have some better. I don't know. But that's just like, you know, armchair quarterback kind of thing. I can, it I can sit back little, and say that's what I would have It seems done, a little tight. <laughs> like, it seems a little tight. Like, it was kind of shot with maybe 70 or something like that, you know, for me. Yeah. It gives this, like, voyeur vibe of, uh, especially with the subject like this, you know, when you when you shoot with yeah. a telephoto lens. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah, as you said, interesting photo. And I don't use uh, I don't use a telephoto lens on purpose in, in my photography because it forces me into good habits. I use a fixed 35 for just about everything. I mean, my first year as a photographer covering assignments in the New York Times, I shot everything with a 35. And that really, it was hard. I wasn't doing, like, that kind of news. I, I was doing news because it's the New York Times, but I was covering, like, stories. Mm -hmm. So I had a little more time with my subjects, a little more time to let the story sort of come to me and learn about the story. So if I was doing, like, spot news... That kind of stuff, like you know, you know, natural disasters and covering that, or like or events or sporting events and things like that. Maybe I would need that kit. But as someone that suits the way that my style works, the way that suits me best is to use a fixed lens that make it makes me move more, it makes me a little more creative with my compositions. A twenty four to seventy and a seventy two hundred for me, it makes me just stay still and zoom and and not think as much and not move as much. So I, mm -hmm. I always encourage my students that want to do long form stuff and they want to do more street photography and they want to spend a little more time and be a lot more thoughtful in the photography i encourage them to to work with a fixed lens so whether that be a 35 or something wider like a, a 28 or 21 or tighter like a 50 whatever really suits you but 35 works well for me moving on to the next one yeah this is cool this has a nice mood to it you know it looks like a shot from like the 70s maybe because the car looks like it's from the 70s but that guy's an interesting character you know his tattoos his chain his muscle shirt the color of his shoes the way it matches the the red matches the the red in the car. I think a lot of the your, uh, people submitting 
have a great eye for color in your your audience. You know, they, they really do. I see some great color combinations in there, great color palettes. And I, I, again, I just think that this is something, this guy's so interesting and that car is so interesting, or he could be more interesting. I'd like to see a little bit more. As it looks, I don't even know what he's doing there. Is he rolling a blunt? Is he about to get a cigarette out? Is he, what is he up to? Uh, I'd like to see his expression more. You know, I don't know if this was like this guy's friend or if he was a little bit scared of this guy and he just took this quick and wanted to move on, but This is the kind of situation I would work because I see he's got a very interesting steering wheel in there. I see potential for reflections through through those interesting windows. You know, him. I see potential for a a really cool portrait or even just working it more of just him hanging out. Uh, You know, that background of the top right, the blown out sky bothers me a little bit. So I would like to be a little bit closer. But, you know, the composition, I would say on like 75 percent of this photo is really nice. You know, I like the I like the way that the wheels look, the rims, the lines in the car lead to him but i'd like to see i would have liked to see him in the car and use the side light from the outside to light him in like a much more moody interesting way and then you see the light in his tattoos his chain his expression and stuff like that Mm. so whether it's a portrait if that's if you wanted to do a portrait of him if you're just doing street photography then i would have maybe just worked it a little more you know if you didn't want to approach him and you're not into portrait work i totally get that too so if i wasn't going to approach him for a portrait i would still want to work it a little bit more and see what else i could get but if you're just passing by and this is what you captured, I think it's still pretty good for that. I like All it, right. though. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that it's probably the same question uh, as with one of those shots before, that the the tones and the style as this look like it was shot on film, mm. or maybe it was, gives this uh, feeling that I like the shot uh, right when I see it because it evokes some kind of like a feeling it might be an old shot, it might be, you know, shot from right. like many years ago. So I don't know if I would necessarily like uh, the composition and the elements if this was shot in in a different, if the finishing approach was different. This was shot just, I don't know if this would work in black and white. I think the color uh, kind of makes mm-hmm. uh, makes the shot. But uh, yeah. yeah, but my first, my first thoughts are I like the shot for overall uh, for overall combination of things like finishing approach of the grain of the film look and of the character which kind of adds to this uh, yeah yeah to this uh, like uh, old time looking shot I think you bring up a good point though too and it's something I see a lot when people submit to me I think people sometimes rely too much on that like if you shot it with that film with the purpose of the film you put thought into that type of film for the reason fine you're adding a film look afterwards to try to make up for a bad picture, which I'm not saying this photographer did. I just, you just, it's just because you mentioned it, it's a good point to bring up though. I think people do that too much. Like they take, it's the same with black and white. They have a photo they think is like, Oh, it's okay. And they just turn to black and white. think it's going to be an excellent photo. It doesn't really work that way. You know, I think it's get the photo right in camera, adding these little filters, whether they're gimmicky or not, that's a different debate or the kind of film, I, but it doesn't make, it doesn't make a bad photo good and it doesn't make a good photo great. It just adds something a little bit to it, but it can't make up for bad composition and bad light. And again, I'm not saying it with this photo yeah. because I, I kind of dig it on its own. And we but don't I, know, I don't we don't know the circumstances, right? It could be like, a, we don't, yeah. you know, we don't know the neighborhood. We don't know if this was shot on film and then photographer just wanted to like uh, spend right. one frame on this, on this moment and then walked on. Or if this was sort of like a friend yeah. of his or her. And we don't, then he just you're right. Said, like, yeah. So, uh, but uh, as a standalone shot, I, uh, I would see, I, I rather like it than not. But uh, there are yeah. a few things that make me think. Yeah, I All agree. Right. I agree, and I and, and yeah, I just bring up that film thing because I just see a lot of people do it, and I think it's a, it's it's a it could be a bad habit to rely All on. Right. I see too many young <laughs> photographers or new photographers do it. But All yeah, right. this shot, um, you know, interesting little moment, nice three layers there. You've got the woman on the phone, beautiful light. This is one of like the, the like out of all of them, I, I like the, for light wise, I do like that shot with the cloud coming through as far as light. That's what I gravitate towards the most. Uh, I like that light, but this light's pretty nice. You know, that like early morning or late afternoon light casting that shadow on the side with her and her phone. Um, she looks, she's kind of an interesting looking person. You've got that layer of, of whatever's going on in between of those like posters of the girl that kind of look like another version of her in there so i like that little triangulation there but you know as far as an overall moment i think when you're going to nail these shots how to take the next level is you've got the light you've got the composition then you want a really interesting moment and someone just looking and talking into their phone for me isn't like a wonderful moment it's just like "Eh, it's okay it doesn't excite me much it doesn't make me feel a lot but as far as the light and the composition go i think it's pretty good in that 
in that regard. Let's take a look at this one. Yeah, this shot for me is cool. I like the light again, the shadows, the composition. This is kind of has everything together. I think, yeah, it doesn't have that great moment, but this could be like the kind of shot that I like. Whenever I see fashion photography or editorial fashion photography, this is the style I like. So if this was like an ad for like that coat, let's say oh, yeah. it's like a gray <laughs> Burberry, Burberry coat, I think it would be cool. Like I think in that regard, it's good. It's, it's a nice street photography shot, but this could also be like a great ad shot. I mean, this would be like a, yeah, like who, uh, I was actually going to do something on Brooklyn uh, uh, Beckham, uh, you know, David Beckham's son is a photographer and he did not oh, for okay. Burberry, but this is what I would rather, this is what I would have rather see for the Burberry ad, something like this, pulled back a little bit, the light hitting the coat. I think from an editorial fashion look, this is, this could work well for that. I think, you know, the photographer's probably just doing street photography, but it's nice. The light hits the coat well, the light hits the subject well. She's got a little turn back to her. She looks very fashionable over the light hitting the side of her face with the sunglasses, the shadow of the, of, of the, of the street lights there. Uh, the background is very clean and crisp, like the way that she pops out of it. It's a cool shot. I dig it. It's very well executed. Good, good. Like the photographer waited for the subject to go between the shadow of the, of the lamp and the shadow of the pole there. The shadow yeah. of the uh, traffic lights, the shadow of the pole there and, and kind of nailed it perfectly. So I think that's the reward, you know, of waiting and being patient and not just settling on any old subject. This is an interesting subject. That's how you elevate your shots. You wait for an interesting subject. You find that background and then you hope to get a good expression. And they've got you know, a little look back. The fact that she's just not in her phone looking across her body. It has a very, like I said, very fashionable feel to it. I dig it. Yeah, I think you've got the point with the fashion thing because this is like how they show the coat in the environment, actually how people are going to wear it. Right? Yeah. So I think this might be the best type of uh, advertisement. So we have two left here. This shot is interesting, I think, from just like a standpoint. As, as an animal person, I just hate to see like animals in bad conditions like this. You know, I, I that my background is as a journalist, but more so these days, I've been doing a lot of wildlife photojournalism. So I hate to see sort of animals and in, in looks like they're being used for amusement, things like that, or being sold to eat. So that's always tough for me. But that aside, I think for a picture, it's the contrast of the snake and her shoes and the angle that the photographer took was quite clever. It was smart to get low like that. You get nice, nice Again, nice moment with the snake. I would have liked to see if the snake, well, I mean, hopefully the snake didn't bite the girl or, or, but, you know, I would like to see maybe the tongue of the snake or something that that little moment there would be a little more patient there. When I see a situation like this, and I don't use a fast camera, but I'll, whatever camera I'm using, I use a Leica M10D, but I would crank it up to like, or well, crank it up on that camera is what, three frames a second. So it's not great, <laughs> but I would just shoot as much as I could to see what I could get. If I could get the tongue of, of the, <laughs> of the snake, just sort of like, I don't know if the snake. I'm assuming he's alive still because it looks like she's going to pet him. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the expression of the kid in the background, that would have been where the shot is. I would like to see a little bit of a moment. But I do like the moment of the hand. I would, If the moment of the hand is going to work, though, I think you need that connection. So that's either the snake going to bite the person or the snake going to, to lick the person with their tongue or something <laughs> like that. Uh, but the fluffy crocs that she has there are interesting. The low angle is a smart choice by the photographer uh, to make it go good from great uh, good to great yeah i would i would love some sort of expression or some sort of moment in there let's take a look at this one yeah this one to me um you know this is tough like people looking at stuff it's just it's hard man i've had to do this for my work so when i'm doing travel stories often my travel stories might be like oh on my list on my shot list from my editor might be like oh get a shot of this gallery right and photographing art as a photographer sucks because you just go to a gallery and your shots are of people looking at other things or of the art itself, which is just like, why not just post their picture or their artwork? So it, it, it's tough for the photographer to do an assignment. It's not something I would choose to do on my own in my street photography of just, just someone looking at stuff tends to be a little bit boring. I mean, the colors are kind of interesting. The fact that they're framed okay, the two people on the right are framed nicely, the other guy on the left, the lines come out of his head. Those little things bother me. I mean, even now with my bags growing out of my head, in my framing of this but you made me frame myself this way so i'm going to blame you for the composition <laughs> but uh the way that i'm fr i don't like i don't like that kind of stuff it, it, it kind of bugs me and then just the subject matter to me is just like oh it's just a little a little boring here people again just people looking at stuff and people walking by stuff I, if it's going to work it's going to have to have exceptional light again a nice moment in there or a nice color contrast and ideally kind of all those things and this doesn't really have many of those things so it's it's kind of a uh not not a wonderful one for me i mean but i don't know in this situation like of this how to make it better i just wouldn't have photographed this you know that's kind of <laughs> what would be my advice there all right thank you
So Let's take a look at this one. <laughs> you put, oh, I didn't know you did stuff like this. All right. Oh my god, I have to be tough on myself. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this is a smart move. I like this. Wow, this photographer is just amazingly talented. I can't say enough good things about them, and there's really nothing they can improve on. I don't see it. Okay, a little context for this picture. This was taken on an assignment for the New York Times. This was uh I was doing a story about Myanmar, maybe 2010, and in, in Myanmar, or some people know it as Burma, you couldn't really go in as a photographer without like a ton of paperwork. They were cracking down on this kind of stuff. So I had to go and pretend I was being part of a tour group, and I had to go off and shoot. Like I actually hired a guy. I, he was in on the whole whole thing, too. So we pretended I was part of a tour group. The tour, I signed up through the tour group, but they sent me a separate guy who took me everywhere as a fixture and translated, and we went and shot my story, which was kind of like just a, a general travel story about Myanmar, but kind of talking about the dark side of it and how it was opening up. So I wanted that mood. So that's the context here. You know, I wanted that dark mood about me and Mar in the shadows. So that's why this shot worked well for me and for the story. You know, I think as far as like how I would improve this, I wish I didn't have just a little bit of that car in the bottom right. I mean, composition wise, I could lose that. I would have loved the subject to be framed perfectly around that blue door there, but I waited there for a long time and I had a lot of shots and I didn't get the shot I wanted. <laughs> I like I would love I mean I'm gonna be tough on myself. I mean it's I'm being tough on you guys, I better be tough on myself. I would have loved the more interesting subject in the background rather than just the color. I do like sort of my triangulation of the red there, the red there on him, the red on the little walkway under the blue and the red in the sign. But, you know, I wish there was a little cleaner of the person in the foreground. And then I did get a shot of like someone with an umbrella in the rain at nighttime like sort of uh, selling street food and i like that one a little bit better but you chose this one because you're mean no i'm just kidding <laughs> <laughs> but I, I i think it worked well for the for the overall mood of the story and what i was trying to capture and i believe the new york times in their slideshow i believe they chose this one as well as one of their as one of the images for the slideshow i think it was very mood heavy as a standalone picture yeah it's still in my portfolio and i, I still i still like it i think i have it in a series but yeah I, you know i 10, 10, 12 years ago, I think I would like to be a little more patient as a photographer and, and, and try to get someone around that blue there and framed out that car on the bottom right. So I, I can definitely improve. I Hopefully I have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you, Justin, for joining me today. It was a very nice conversation with you. Thank you for having me. It was a lot of fun doing this. And thank you for everyone that submitted. I really appreciate it. I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm trying to give give advice i'm just as harsh on myself but i i i'm I, I applaud everyone for submitting the photos i think it's great to, as a community and what you do to put your photos out there to be vulnerable it's hard you know i never want to discourage anyone from taking photos i just try to encourage people to take better photos and to constantly improve and that's kind of what we should all be trying to do at every level in all of our photography <laughs> yeah perfect so thank you and maybe see you in the future hope so thank you have for a having nice me. day you too